Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about transdermal magnesium therapy. Now, the Chinese call magnesium the beautiful mineral, and it's also known as the lamp of life. And it's been also called the most absolute important nutrient in the world. In fact, Dr. Mark Serkis, one of the country's leading authorities on the effects of magnesium on our health, has even stated this, quote, the bedrock of medicinal truth sits upon the metal magnesium, for it is at the exact center of biological life, like air and water is. All of life collapses around its loss, but with only the smallest amount of caring and intelligence, we can replace what has been lost inside of a person's cells. He goes on to say that for the deepest healing of many health problems, quote, there is going to be only one answer, and that answer is magnesium preferably in the chloride form. And finally, he states, what we have found is that magnesium chloride applied transdermally is the ideal magnesium delivery system with health benefits unequaled in the entire world of medicine, unquote. <clears throat> I read these words about 15 years ago when I was studying the health benefits of magnesium. And at the same time, my teacher and mentor by Jaramakant Mishra, an award-winning Ayurvedic herbal formulator and dermatologist, was also researching the use of magnesium as well. After I finished my research, I thought I had better call him because I knew he was intent on formulating transdermal magnesium products. That means taking them through the skin. <clears throat> I had just finished reading how magnesium chloride was the best form of magnesium to use. And I remember thinking I better let him know since he was a Vaija who had just come from a small village in India, and I thought he might not be well-versed enough in the latest modern research. So I remember calling him and asking him how he was coming along with his transdermal magnesium products. He said he was very happy with the creams, roll-ons, and abhyanga oils he was developing. And I asked him what type of magnesium he was using in all the products. <clears throat> and even without all the research I had access to, I was shocked when he replied, magnesium chloride, that's the best. From that point on, I never questioned any of his formulas. And he, he also knew intuitively that the transdermal use of magnesium was the best delivery system. <clears throat> it turns out that the fats in the skin disperse it into the body and activate it along the way, allowing the magnesium deprived cells in your body to bathe in its healing effects. Let's see why every cell in your body is crying out for more magnesium and why we should learn to listen to these calls. <clears throat> Let's start with the fact that magnesium is bound to the center of the chlorophyll molecule. And it's because of magnesium that the plants can convert the sunlight, that vibrational energy, into a physical energy, into chlorophyll, which means that all of life, including the food chain, is dependent upon the sunlight chlorophyll magnesium chain. So we can consider it the source of life, since all animals and humans eat plants for their food supply. All of life for billions of years has been dependent on the development of chlorophyll, a molecule that captures light energy from the sun and through a process <clears throat> called photosynthesis, transforms it into small energy rich molecules easy for the cells to use, which creates all the various life, life forms on earth. <clears throat> so magnesium then is seen as the one nutrient which is needed by plants to form chlorophyll, which makes the plants green. But on a deeper level, without magnesium, the plants would not be able to absorb nutrition from the sun because the process of photosynthesis wouldn't go on. This is why when magnesium is depleted, things begin to die. In fact, you can't take a breath, move a muscle, think a thought, or make energy without enough magnesium in your cells. In fact, 800 other functions wouldn't occur either, since magnesium is a catalyst for all these important reactions throughout the body. Let's take a deeper look at what magnesium does for us. So first of all, it plays this huge role in helping the newly formed DNA to repair itself. See, toxins can cause oxidative damage to the DNA, causing dangerous mutations to form. Magnesium initiates many of the mechanisms that are needed to occur to help correct any mistakes as the DNA is forming, which will help 
prevent serious diseases like cancer and so on from developing. Glutathione is considered the body's master antioxidant, which prevents generation of free radicals. In fact, glutathione is one of the few antioxidant molecules which can neutralize mercury. But magnesium is required to make glutathione, so if the magnesium goes low, and I can emphatically tell you from my experience, it's low in just about every one of us, then the glutathione levels become severely depleted, which is not good because glutathione defends the body against damage from things like cigarette smoking, radiation, cancer-causing chemicals, alcohol, and really just about any other toxin you could think of. <clears throat> the vast majority of the new patients complain to me of low energy. That's the main complaint we see in my practice. There are several reasons for this, and we always make sure to address all those reasons. But keep in mind that the body makes energy by producing ATP, and ATP is made in the mitochondria and it's made in each of the 100 trillion cells of our bodies. ATP is the main source of energy in our cells, and inside each cell are the mitochondria making the energy for all of our cells' functions. But ATP must be bound to magnesium in order for it to work. ATP is formed from our food through a series of chemical reactions known as the Krebs cycle, and seven of the 10 enzymes in the cycle are dependent on magnesium. <clears throat> and here's the other important thing. Magnesium sits on the outside of every cell in your body, always keeping the calcium out. It's always pushing away the calcium. So if magnesium becomes too low, calcium can take advantage and quickly infiltrate into the mitochondria, causing it to calcify. This would create lots of health problems because that heart muscles have a never-ending need for energy because they're always contracting without a rest. And the mitochondria are highly concentrated in the brain and the central nervous system, which is why calcification of the mitochondria is implicated in Parkinson's disease, <clears throat> MS, and other brain diseases. And since the power plant of the cells is in the mitochondria where all the ATP is made, if the mitochondria become low in magnesium, and the calcium gains access inside, this calcification of the mitochondria can mark the beginning of the aging process and a downward spiral in our health. In fact, every function can slow down when the mitochondria calcify. This is why our biochemical age is determined by the ratio of calcium to magnesium, both on the inside and the outside of our cells. The ancient doctors of India said there are two types of hormone problems. Either not enough of the hormone is being made, or sufficient quantities of the hormones are being made, but they're not getting transported to the areas where they exert their influence. Magnesium has effects on both of these two aspects concerning the hormones. It's used to both make the hormones, and it's also a cofactor involved in transporting those hormones into the cells because the hormones can't pass into the inside of the cells by themselves. So magnesium carries them across the cell wall and delivers them into the inside of the cells. <clears throat> we can make these hormones, but if they just sit outside the cell, they can't carry out their intended functions, so they don't do us any good. In fact, magnesium also allows insulin to transfer glucose or sugar into the cells. So if magnesium becomes low, the glucose and insulin can build up and the blood sugar can go high. Many of our patients get tremendous relief from their headaches because magnesium promotes relaxation in the head and neck muscles and prevents spasms in the walls of the arteries, taking away intense headache and migraine pain. And magnesium is also famous for lowering blood pressure. This is because it relaxes the muscles in the walls of the arteries, allowing the artery to open up causing the blood pressure to go down. When we're stressed, the magnesium flushes out of the body, which can cause the arteries to contract down to constrict, which causes the blood pressure to go up. Once the magne magnesium levels come back up, the muscles in the walls of the arteries relax, and then the blood pressure goes down as the artery dilates back open again. 
Magnesium is also an amazing antidote for hardening of the arteries. Any calcium we take into our bodies should only go into our bones and teeth, and that's it. But calcium always wants to take advantage whenever uh, magnesium goes low, rushing into the inside of the cells, creating lots of problems. For example, if it makes its way into the inside of your arteries, it will cause hardening of the arteries. So normally when the heart beats, the arteries give a little due to the elastic found in one of the layers of the arteries. It's kind of like a rubber band. And this dilation of the arteries keeps the blood pressure low when the heart beats. But over a lifetime, if calcium has been allowed to infiltrate into the elastic layer, it'll make the arteries stiff and hard, causing the blood pressure to go up when the heart beats. But the good news is, I've been able to reverse hardening of the arteries in so many of our elderly patients. See, if you take the pulse of someone in their 20s, you can feel a lot of elasticity in the arteries. They're very pliable and soft. But as the patient ages, by the time they're in their 50s, 60s, and above, the arteries start to feel very hard due to the calcium which has infiltrated over the years. And always remember this image. If you put a calcium tablet in a glass of water, it just sits there. But once you put some magnesium in, it'll break it down and disintegrate it. The same thing happens to the calcium lining our arteries. Magnesium can displace the calcium out once it enters into your body. So this means that if you're very diligent in using your transdermal magnesium products, the arteries will become soft and pliable again as the magnesium forces that hard calcium out and the pulse will feel much younger like when you were in your 20s. And the blood pressure will go down again. And think of this. Nearly everyone sooner or later develops cataracts as they age. But what are cataracts? Well, they're the infiltration of calcium into the lens. Again, calcium is trying to get into places we don't want it. And once the calcium enters the lens, it becomes very difficult to see. So start out using magnesium to prevent or delay the onset of the cataracts. Now, as far as osteoporosis is concerned, many people automatically think of supplementing with calcium when they hear their bones are depleted. Calcium makes the bones hard and brittle, like a piece of chalk, which breaks if you drop it. But magnesium keeps the bones pliable, kind of like a chicken bone. If you try to break it, it bends due to the elasticity from the magnesium contained in it. So don't forget to keep up with your magnesium therapies if you get a diagnosis of either osteopenia or osteoporosis. And as far as Ayurveda is concerned, magnesium is known as a tridoshic therapy. This means that it's balancing to all three body types, vata, pitta, and kapha. It calms the nervousness of vata, cools down the heat of pitta, and it gives energy to the laid-back kaphas who sometimes tend to get a little lazy. And not only that, it has the unique property of being both nourishing and detoxifying at the same time. This is an unusual quality to have because some remedies are either detoxifying, which break down the body as they cleanse the tissues, while others build up the body due to their nurturing capabilities. But magnesium does both. These rare types of remedies which have both effects of nourishing and detoxifying are highly prized in Ayurveda. We like to apply it directly on the skin where it brings new life into the cells. The fat cells in the skin take up the magnesium and absorb and activate it much better than if it's taken orally where it sometimes travels too quickly through the digestive tract which could create loose bowel movements and even diarrhea. Now, we use the magnesium chloride in all of our transdermal products. Abhyanga oils, which are used for daily oil massages, concentrated roll-ons, and creams that are applied to specific areas where the magnesium is needed mo most. Like we could put it on the lower spine and the lower abdomen to prevent the painful menstrual cramps. Or put it on the lower legs to prevent restless legs and muscle spasms. They call them charley horses. On the entire back to prevent irregular heartbeats or to lower the blood pressure. You could put the magnesium down the entire spine, on the wrist and the soles of the feet, and under the skull in the back, in the suboccipital region, where the skull ends and the neck begins, for panic attacks and headaches, 
nervousness, and anxiety. We even use magnesium chloride baths to treat severe body aches and pains and to calm the nerves and lower the blood pressure. Now, Epsom salts contain magnesium sulfate, but the sulfate form doesn't have the long-lasting effects like the magnesium chloride does. Plus, the body has to convert the sulfate into the chloride form, so you might as well use the magnesium chloride in the first place. And magnesium chloride has a stronger effect on drawing out toxins through the pores of the skin than any of the other types of magnesium. Just about everyone needs magnesium, and this is why. The cortisol we produce when we're stressed flushes magnesium out of the body. Nearly every pharmaceutical also flushes out magnesium. The soil nowadays is depleted in magnesium. Alcohol, coffee, and the phosphorus in soda is also depleted. And for every molecule of sugar you eat, it takes 18 molecules of magnesium to break it down. Transdermal use of magnesium is the safest way to take it. The skin absorbs exactly what it needs without you having to worry if you're overdosing or underdosing. I hope you can now understand why magnesium is considered the absolute most important nutrient in our bodies. The transdermal use of magnesium on a daily basis will improve your health more than just about any other remedy you could ever think of. Thank you.